out there boxing fans this is cmd boxing reports ronell head reporting and i'm back with another vid okay so the reason why champions like fighters after they win a big fight why they stall all the time including the promoter of that fighter will help that fighter also stall okay after winning a big fight all right it's, it's because of you know uh, the train ride okay to uh star power okay they want their stock to rise okay such as like uh anthony joshua okay his big name fight okay the first one he ever had in his career of course was against vladimir klitschko now it ain't like vladimir klitschko hasn't been defeated before all right we all knows he's been beaten plenty of times all right however this was anthony joshua's big stage okay this was the first time he was on the big stage all right and um yeah he's gonna you know try to ride it out okay and you know eddie hearn is going to help that he's going to help him out with that all right now let's take a uh look all right back in history we ain't gonna go back that far only 15 years all right where uh certain fighters had big fights and you know their train ride to this uh top has you know was cut short all right all right so let's start with um burning force so we're going back uh 2002 all right january of 2002 when uh burning force okay who was destined for fame all right and uh glory all that good stuff all right took on shane mosley all right and he fought shane mosley for the welterweight uh, WBC belt. We all know what happened, man. He derailed Shane Mosley in that fight. Okay, he ended up winning the belt. Now, about six months later, they had a rematch. He beats Shane Mosley again. Now, Vernon Forrest, all right, was riding high off of the, um, off of both victories over Shane Mosley. Okay, because he was the man who beat the man. Okay, he beat Shane Mosley, who had beat Oscar De La Hoya. Okay, so. Like Vernon Forrest said, look, Shane Mosley was looked at, he was looked at as Superman, okay? He was looked at Superman of the welterweight division. Now, am I going to be the new Superman? All right, hey, that's how he took it. So, after that big victory, all right, you seen Vernon Forrest everywhere, okay? He was in every magazine. I mean, he was in Ebony magazines, Jet magazines. I mean, just taking pictures with people and having a WBC strap hung over his shoulder. Same old uh, pose, you know, smiling at the camera, thumb in the air, you know, and he was in every hip hop magazine, every boxing magazine, okay? You know, he was, you know, riding high, okay? So, he then takes on um, Ricardo Mayorga, okay? And that was like almost a year later, all right? Uh, it was actually on January uh, the 25th, okay? It was like one day shy of a year when he took on Shane Mosley in 2002 on uh, January the 26th. Now, of course, uh, Ricardo Mayorga, he had the WBA title belt. And Vernon Forrest, he had the WBC, the one he took from Shane Mosley. He goes in there against Ricardo Mayorga and he gets starched in the second round. All right. Damn. Train ride was short for him. Okay. And um, even Larry Merchant mentioned something to him about it. He said, man, look, you know, you just beat Shane Mosley. And uh, what you should have done was, you know, taking on a few softer opponents, you know, so your stock can rise up. Why would you take on someone like this guy? And, you know, he was like, well, I beat the best. And I wanted to continue to bring on the best in my division. Okay. Now, of course, we all know Vernon Forrest was very distraught. Like I said, he was in every he was everywhere in every magazine that they printed out. Okay. And um, of course, he went back to his dressing room and he broke down, and started crying. All right, because you know his destiny, his destiny to fame and everything was cut short. So. He winds up taking on Ricardo Mayorga again, all right? And uh, he ended up uh, losing to Ricardo Mayorga in a rematch uh, by majority decision. That was like six months later, okay? 
So now Ricardo Mallorca is the man now. All right. He just had a big win. All right. He just beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. Okay. He beat Vernon Forrest, who beat Shane Mosley, Shane Mosley, who beat Oscar De La Hoya. So now the train ride starts with Vernon Ford, with Ricardo Mallorca. All right. And um, he goes into the rematch with Vernon Forrest. All right. And uh, of course, he ends up winning the fight again by majority decision. All right. And that was like six months later. So Ricardo Mallorca, he held, if I'm doing this right, he held um, both WBC and WBA belts for like 10 months. Okay. After that, yeah, after he beaten Vernon Forrest, he went on to take on Corey Spinks. Okay. Now, this was a fight. I thought Corey Spinks had no chance to win. All right. Now, what they was doing here, they was unifying the belts. Mostly like what everyone, you know, wants now. Okay. With Anthony Joshua and, you know, Luis Ortiz and, and uh, Deontay Wilder. Okay. They want to see stuff like this. All right. Now, he takes on Corey Spinks, who was the IBF champion at the time. Now, he goes in. I'm thinking Corey Spinks going to get murdered because he don't have the punching power to keep a fighter likes Ricardo Mayorga off of. All right, but he surprised me. He surprised everyone. He ended up winning the fight against uh, Ricardo Mayorga uh, by a, a majority decision. And now Corey Spinks, you know, he was up there celebrating. You know, showing emotion. Hey, man, I just made history, which he did. He is the the first like undisputed uh, welterweight champion. All right, at that time in in the uh, uh, world of boxing, he had held the IBF, WBA, and WBC. Okay, those were the three major belts back then. Okay, and now Corey Spinks held all three. Now Corey Spinks is the man. Okay. Who beat the man? Who beat the man? Who beat the man? Who beat the man? Okay, <laughs> he beat Ricardo Mayorga, who defeated Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest, who defeated Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley, who defeated Oscar De La Hoya. So now Corey Spinks, his stock is starting to rise. He's on the train now. You know, heading up, you know, to that big star in the sky. You know, he's about to become a superstar. So. Corey Spinks, he later he later on take on um, Zab Judah. Okay, now I was you know rooting for Corey Spinks to win because like I said, he just defeated one of the most strongest uh, welterweights at that time, and that was uh, Ricardo Mayorga. Because Vernon Force has never been dropped before in a fight. Okay, until he faced Ricardo Mayorga. So I looked at him as one of the strongest in the division, one of the strongest. I, I mean, I know Trinidad was strong. You know, but then again, I don't think Trinidad was fighting that well to wait. He had already left to 154. So Ricardo Mayorga was known as the strongest at that time. One of the strongest. So he takes on uh, Zab Judah about four months later. And like I had thought, he ended up winning against Zab Judah. Now, I was kind of, you know, I felt kind of funny about that fight because in the 12th round, Zab Judah had knocked Corey Spinks down. And how it goes in boxing if you win the final round which is the 12th round you wins the fight but i guess that don't count for championship fights you know he didn't knock out Corey Spinks in the 12th round he just dropped him so Corey Spinks end up uh winning the fight against that Judah unanimous decision okay he kicks all three belts so five months later Corey Spinks he took on Miguel Gonzalez he wins against him unanimous decision all right, six months later, he takes on Zab Judah in the rematch, okay? And he loses all three belts. He gets stopped by Zab Judah, okay? Right there in his hometown, Missouri, St. Louis. All right, so, Corey, but Corey Spinks, he was the one who held the belts the longest, all right? He held it for, for over a year. All right, now, Zab Judah, he takes on um, uh, Cosme Rivera, and I don't know what happened uh, after that with all the belts because by the time he took on Carlos Baltimore, Zab Judah only had the WBC. You know, it was 15 years ago. I mean, I don't, I don't actually 12 years ago because this happened in 2005 when uh, Corey Spinks had lost to 
Carlos Baltimore, actually 2006. But I really don't know what happened. Um, I'll be frank with you. All he had was the, I, was the uh, WBC, the IBF, and the WBA was gone. Maybe he had vacated the belts or he got stripped, you know. Hell, I mean, them sanctioning fees is a lot of money. I mean, y'all see that uh, Julius Ndongo and Terrence Bud Crawford, they had to spend like, what, $100,000 a piece for the belts they are fighting for. So, yeah, that stuff, it adds up. So maybe it made sense for him to get rid of two and just keep one. So, you know, this is why things go the way they go. All right, in boxing, you know, why these guys, they stall after a big win. I mean, from 2002 to 2005, them belts were just being handed to the next fighter. They were being passed around. You know, it was like, you know, you in a long line and someone give you a picture or they, they give you a piece of paper. They say, sign your name and pass it down. Mostly that's what was going on back then. You know, they would look at it, sign their name, pass it to the next one. Look at it, sign their name, pass it to the next one. And that's what was happening, you know, like I said, back in, you know, from 2002 to 2005 with these belts. And Eddie Hearn, he's making, he's going to make sure that, well, he was trying to make sure that doesn't happen to Anthony Joshua. But, you know, two major keys, you know, that was, he was hoping for and end up leaving. That was Tyson Fury and, you know, uh, Vladimir Klitschko. They both end up retiring. And he was hoping for that rematch with uh, Vladimir Klitschko because it was a, a pretty good chance that Anthony Joshua beat him again. And that will make his star power even rise even more. And then hopefully he will take on Tyson Fury. You know, and all this right here was just stalling. Okay? So, mo mostly these guys really ain't ducking. You know, no one, you know, they just stalling, you know, the train. So they stop, could, uh, you know, not stalling the train, but, you know, stalling the action. So they could just have that nice ride to, you know, the top after a big fight, okay, that, that they had. You know, that's how they doing it now, okay. Um, Danny Garcia did it, okay. Danny Garcia was taking on a lot of bombs. And it was working because so many people wanted to see him lose that... They, it didn't matter who he fought, who, who he faced. Uh, millions of people will tune in to watch just to see if he loses. Okay, but that's my take on this. This is CMD Boxing Reports. I'll see you guys on the next one.